Paper casting is a centuries old technique where paper is formed into shapes using a mold. Today I'm going to show you how to use your paper tree ink stamps and even some of the dies as molds to create these beautiful embossed and debossed images. First you'll need a roll of bath tissue and the one ply wasn't quite fluffy enough for this technique so you'll definitely want the two ply. It's okay if the two ply is quilted because when we add water the quilted look will be removed. So you'll need a, also a cup of water a roll of paper towels, and a dry kitchen towel. Now the first image we'll be working with is a snowflake from the Snowflake Medley stamp set. I like this image because I felt like it had nice bold lines and would work well with this technique. So you'll place the snowflake stamp onto an acrylic block like you normally would for stamping, and then turn it upside down on your work surface. Then you'll tear off about six to eight sections of the bath tissue and layer them in a pile over your stamp. Next you'll pour a little bit of water over the image from your cup of water, saturating all the way through the tissue, and you'll use the kitchen towel next to soak up as much of the water as you can, pressing down into the details of the stamp. And last you'll follow up with a paper towel just to get any extra water out that you can. You'll want to try to get as much water out as you can because A, it will dry faster, and B, you'll be able to get the tissue down into all of those finer details of the stamp and, and form it into the snowflake shape. When you have as much of the water out as you can and you've pressed down into the details, you'll lift it up and check out your results. And there you have it. Isn't that beautiful? I love the embossing. Now say you want to create a little scene with more than one stamp. Here I have the Leafy Vine from Stitch Sentiments and the Holiday Wishes stamp from Think Big Favorites number 9. And I want to get them placed just right together. Um, if I have placed them upside down on the stamping block like I did with the first one, I wouldn't be able to tell if they were positioned how I wanted them to be. So I placed them right side up and then just grab them with my stamping block and flipped it over and then I'll do the same technique placing six to eight pieces of toilet tissue and the best stamps for this technique are really the more bold ones um, the fine details sometimes can get lost in this technique but um, there's so many different Christmas sets that you could do um, if you didn't want to do Christmas, you could create a tag with um, pretty much any other set. Just look through your stash and see what will work. I actually did this technique about five years ago, and I, I'll put a link on my blog um, of the ones that I did back then, but just thought it was such a cool technique. It's been around for a long time, but it's kind of fun to bring it back again and see what you will all create. So then I will lift it up and see what we have. Isn't that neat? I love it. So I'll show you a few more that I created. Um, these are made with the 2011 Holiday Tag stamp set. And here's the Joy image. You can see that the, the image, the white part of the image is actually the part that gets embossed and the black part of the image is actually the debossed. Um, some of the fine details did turn out really well on these. It's kind of cool. Try different ones and see what you can come up with. Some work better than others, so it's kind of a trial and error. I'll show you the floral one, just for you. That one turned out really cute. I love how the flowers popped up. Next I'll show you how you can do the same technique with some of the paper train dies. Here I have the large die from Delicate Details, and I'm just going to do the same technique. The thing about the dies is that they're not quite as thick as stamps, so your image is not going to be quite embossed, it's not going to be quite as deep as it turns out with the stamps, but the dies do work for this technique also. 
So you'll just do the same thing. Make sure the tissue is nice and saturated. Soak it up with the towel. And follow up with the paper towel. And when you peel it off, you do get a really nice image. Another thing I wanted to share with you is that when you take a look at some of the sentiments, like this one I did here from Think Big Favorites number nine, is that they have sort of an irregular border around the stamp. And so that will show up in the um, impression. And that's totally fine if you if it doesn't bother you in any way, you can use any of these sentiments also. If it bothers you, look for a stamp that has a definite shape to it, like the snowflake. Okay, so today is day two of my video and I've learned some things overnight. Um, I had to let my pieces dry overnight and this is how they turned out. And they're absolutely gorgeous like this, but I figured out that when you try to go and die cut them, all it does is just flatten them right out and you lose your image. So I wanted to show you really quick how you can um, die cut them first and do it. This is what it looks like when, the, when it's flattened and the image is gone. So what you'll do is take an, a stack of oops, probably about seven pieces. I don't think you can cut more than eight. Um, you'll die cut them. This is the tag cell number four die. It's rather thin, but when you uh, put the water over the top, it kind of poofs it up again. And this is the tree from the Winterberry stamp set. I'm going to load it onto my stamping block. I'll pour a little bit of water in the center of my tag. And then I'll place the tree right in the center and very carefully lift it up together and flip it over. That way I know I have my tree right where I want it to be in the center. Then I'll take a paper towel and just dabbing in the center, trying to get the water out of the tag. I, I tried not to touch the edges of the tag because I don't want to distort the tag shape at all, but it does work just dabbing in the center of the tag. So here are my finished tags, and I used the Tremendous Tags die to add little tags, tag on a tag. Um, I just thought it would be fun to add a little bit of color and a sentiment to these, and I will have the complete supply list for each one at the end of my video. These two are the ones that I made with the dies as my mold, and I used Mistletoe and Holly on the left tag and Winter Cheer stamp set on the right tag. This next one says hugs and kisses and holiday wishes. And I used grand ampersand on the little tag and mistletoe and holly. And I added a few dots of glossy accents on the three little circles that I punched from red cardstock. This one was actually paper casted with a sentiment stamp and after it was dry, I stamped into it again with black ink to help the sentiment stand out a little bit more. This was one of the ones that I didn't die cut first, so instead of throwing them all away, I actually traced the tag sale for die on the back and cut it out with scissors. This one was paper casted with 2008 holiday tags and I used winter cheer on the little tag. And last but not least, I cut this snowflake out myself and stamped into the impression with Versamark ink and then poured zing embossing powder in and heat embossed it to add a little bit of color. You could also maybe add some glossy accents over the top to make these look ceramic, or you could paint them to color them after they're dry, or add some glitter. I would recommend die cutting another of the same shape out of cardstock to add to the back. This way if you're going to hang these on a tree or use them on a gift package, the extra layer will add a bit more sturdiness to your tag. That's it for this technique. I sure hope you enjoyed it. See you next time. Bye.